We've got a Parks for People Heritage Lottery Fund um, funding source and that allows us to do some amazing things in the, in the estate. We're restoring all our follies. Um, we're restoring the main coach house and associated buildings, uh, which is where, where we're sitting at the moment, uh, turning those into a, into a cafe, into a uh, small visitor centre, um, community rooms. It's going to be a, a real hub for, for the new park. Um, on either side of us we have the, the carriage houses where the, 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 the main vehicles for transport, so where the carriages would live. And then on either side, on the wings on either side, we had the, the stables where the horses would, would live. And um, this was an absolute state-of-the-art facility when it was built in the 1860s. Uh, you would not have found a finer stable, whether you were an estate owner or a horse. From both perspectives, it was beautifully uh, designed. The, the two carriage rooms, um, one's becoming a cafe and one is becoming a visitor centre and a reception. And the old stables, one is becoming a, an interpretation area. Uh, we're keeping the existing stalls that the horses lived in and each one is going to represent a different period in, in Staunton's history. I think the main thing is separating the estate down to its different landowners, the, the, the estate owners, because each comes with a different period from Staunton to Stone to Fitzwigram, they all had a different influence on the estate and they all did it their way. And um, some of them removed some of the features that their predecessors had installed and, and put their own um, items in. And so, so constant change through the estate and, um, and some good things and some less good things. And so it's to just look at the way that the landscaping across the estate um, has changed over time. And, and that takes it right up, the Fitzwigrams as the last estate owners, that takes it right up to the 20th century. And the oral history project and some of their, um, their memories will be incorporated into that interpretation. So that brings it up to date more or less. Okay, so the top of the coach house is this uh, amazing clock tower. And, and in the clock tower is a, is a clock. Um, you wouldn't really notice it from the ground, it, the, the hands don't move, it doesn't chime, it's not worked for many, many years. And we were doing some investigation recently and we found uh, an old clockmaker that could come up and have a look and give us an opinion on it. And right up this rickety old ladder at the top of the building, it turned out there's a really rare, unusual clock made by a guy called Villamay and he was a royal clockmaker many years ago. Uh, it, it was the Rolls Royce of, of clocks. Um, the, the hands have gold leaf on them. The main face is, is cut out of slate. It has a, a rigid pendulum that's about five meters long. And so there's some really unusual features about it. And who knows what other surprises there are with the estate as we, as we finish the restoration. It's actually a two-stage process with lottery funding. So what they do is they give you, if they like the idea, they'll give you a grant to allow you to develop because it's quite a big project. And so we actually had about 18 months to work with landscape architects and the right kind of engineers and architects um, to develop the plans. And then you put that back to lottery again. And if they like the way you've worked up the ideas, then they'll give you a full grant and uh, yes, when we got the full grant, it was really, really fab because we knew um, how important it would be to this local area and to the park. The works have been broadly split into two parts. So the landscape renovations and the building renovations. And in terms of buildings, um, the main building is the Victorian Coach House. And it's a beautiful building. There are lots of really lovely design features in it. And so we're working with those design features. And part of the Coach House will be, uh, become a cafe uh, with seating area actually in the horse stalls. 
But then stretching out into the park during Staunton's time, one of the features of the design was the incorporation of follies, which are sort of funny little buildings really with no actual practical purpose. They're really decorative and they were quite a mixture in, um, in the park. I think they're about 19 or 20 in total. Um, not many of them are left, sadly, but what we have got left, we've got um, a beautiful beacon, uh, which is a sort of like, sort of mini mausoleum. And that's over to the eastern side of the um, coach house. That's being renovated. It would have had a flagpole with a flag on top of it when uh, Staunton lived here. And I think probably like the Queen when she was in residence, he probably put the flagpole, flag up the flagpole when he was in residence. Uh, down near the lake, there's a lovely shell house. Um, that's quite a complicated renovation because only the base of the shell house is left and it had a crown on top of it. And we're actually having to fabricate the uh, crown in uh, a new material called jesmonite. That's going to be quite complicated, um, but I think the finished um, result will be fantastic. Since we started the Capital Works back in the autumn, in September, the weather was reasonably kind to start with, but then really the wet weather set in. And so we should have been much, much further ahead with all the path renovations. And we had to make sure that we fit in with the ecology. So we had to make sure that um, at things like bats and dormice and the reptiles. So all the work had and to tie in with that and the bird nesting season. So there are constraints on time. So we've been very lucky to be able to appoint um, a community engagement officer and a volunteer coordinator. And so alongside the building, the Capital Works, they've been running a programme of activities and events and recruiting volunteers to cover a whole range of different roles in the parkland. Uh, hi, I'm Anna Dyer. Uh, firstly, I've been visiting Saunton since 1971. It's hugely important to me. And I joined the committee for Staunton. We um, a registered charity and a committee that are going to maintain what the lottery funding has done for us. The little bridge that my children, who are now in their 50s, have run across hundreds of times, with me shouting behind them, please don't fall in, has got taken back to its original state with the Chinese sides put back on. It's a beautiful bridge. And when I first came up here, still, uh, the lake was full of swans. Absolutely a beautiful place to come as a family. It's just going to be wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So the restoration will ensure it goes on for many, many generations and not just ours. After Staunton uh, lived in the park, William Stone actually chose to build a house of his own overlooking the lake. And that house survived until the late 1950s, but then I'm afraid it was knocked down. Um, and what was left was um, a sort of footprint of the house when the grass has grown over that and just the terrace overlooking the lake. And this actually came up as part of our community consultation that um, local people said that they really wanted to see the um, house sort of brought back to life as much as possible. And so what we're doing is we're uncovering the footprint of the house and it will be laid out in stone so that people can walk from room to room. And I like to think of it looking a little bit like a giant Cluedo board. Um, I think that's really important from the younger generations right through. And many people certainly who visit the farm at the moment a lot will say, well, I was brought here when I was little and so I'm bringing my children here now. And we'd really like that to spread throughout the whole park, really, so that people will visit the farm and enjoy what that has to offer, but then come across to the parkland and have a picnic and sit by the lake and run around and just enjoy themselves.
everything a family would love. Everything in one word, I don't know, awesome, I think. Awesome would probably do it. Yeah.